So let's start out with the colors we're seeing here. Uh, the reason a color fish finder is so much better than an old monochrome or a, you know, a liquid crystal with the, have, you know, the grayscale is because we can tell the intensity of our returns. Now, what's a return? A return is anything on the screen. Okay. If you look where all the colors are on this screen from the top to the bottom, you see yellow at the top and you see yellow and red at the bottom and blue, basically uh, three quarters to the left of the screen. That's all a history. Okay. That's things we passed over or things that have passed under our transducer. And that's the history. Okay. That's just telling us what we already passed over towards the right. You're going to see a gray bar. Okay. You see a zero here at the top between that zero and the 40 at the bottom. There's a gray bar. It's kind of jagged on the right side, but smooth on the left. That's our A scope. All newer fish finders have an A scope you can turn on. It doesn't matter what brand you have. This is a Simrad NSS Evo 3. The Lowrance units have them as well. Turn your A scope on. That's really going to help you learn what's happening here. So you're going to see the yellow at the top. That's our surface. And the reason all that, that all those returns are up there is because the surface gets churned up as we're moving waves churn it up our prop churns it up lots of things are floating in the surface you know pine needles uh, pollen leaves whatever so all that clutter up there is just stuff that's you know churned up just noise on the surface you could pretty much ignore that there are settings to remove that but i wouldn't remove that until you get really good with your fish finder because sometimes bait is very close to the surface and we don't want to lose those so basically that's what that is let's jump to the bottom now in the very bottom of the screen you're going to see a very hard yellow bar. That is our bottom. That's just the bottom of the water right there. That's the bottom of the lake, river, ocean, whatever you see. That's the hard bottom. Now, there are different palettes in your fish finder. Palette is just an assortment of colors you choose. This is one of my favorite palettes. Uh, it's just easier to see for me. It's a Lowrance color. It's one of the older colors, and it's here with the Simrad as well. And uh, if we look at our bottom right away, we see yellow. So that means our hardest returns are going to be yellow. The biggest fish, hard rocks, uh, anything that is large and strong in the water will be yellow. So that tells us if we're looking for fish, we want to see that yellow. We're looking for big fish. That yellow is good, right? And you can see it fade down eventually to white at the bottom. It goes to that reddish orange, then to blue, then to white. So blue is the weakest return and white is no return. So that tells us a lot. You know, as we see our fish in the water, if we see yellow, we know it's a bigger fish probably or it's just in, a, in the center of the cone of the transducer and it's uh, absorbing a lot more energy so it looks brighter. Again, I'm trying to keep this simple uh, as I can. I hope I'm not you know, giving you too much info, but let's talk about how sonar works. All right, we have a transducer. It's either mounted on the transom or it's through the hull or it's in the hull. This here is a through hull. It doesn't matter. They all work the same basically when you're moving slowly, okay? The way a transducer works is it sends a signal straight down from the transducer. It's facing down, so it's going to send a signal or a ping or a pulse, whatever you want to call it, straight down to the bottom. When it hits the bottom, it's going to bounce up, come right back to the transducer. Anything that interrupted that pulse's travel will show up in your A-scope there. The A-scope is what's under your transducer right this second. It's now. It's real time. So you'll see different color dashes in there. The colors, again, tell us the strength of the return. Yellow is the strongest, blue is the weakest, and that reddish orange is in between. So the transducer tells you what's under the boat right now in that A-scope. Anything to the left of that A-scope is a history. That's stuff we've already passed by. Your transducer, the way it behaves, it shines down like a flashlight would. So if you shine a flashlight and you put your hand right up to it, you'll see a you know, small circle on your hand of light. If you look at that same light on a barn door that's maybe 50 feet away, it's a giant circle, right? Well, your transducer behaves the same way. It shines straight down. It gets wider as it goes. So you may see, like even in this shot here, you see a lot more fish towards the bottom than the top. There might be just as many fish all the way through this water column, but because your transducer is so narrow at the top, it's not going to have as many returns. Nothing, not as many fish are going to break the beam because the beam is narrower. So you got to keep that in mind. When you're uh, deeper you are, the wider your cone, the more things you're going to interrupt the pulse or the ping, so the more returns you're going to get. All right, let's talk about the shape of the returns. You're going to see they look like arches. If your fish finder is set up correctly and you're moving four, five, six miles an hour, you should see arches like this. If you're getting half arches, your transducer may need to be adjusted. 
And it looks like an arch because we're moving. We're up and down. We're right across the fish and we keep moving. If your returns are very long and wormy, it usually happens and it usually means we're going slow or the fish is just inside the pulse of your transducer for a longer period of time. So if you're sitting still, if we were going zero miles an hour here, all these would look like worms, okay? They wouldn't look like arches. So fish look like arches when we're moving and they look like long, thin worms when we're sitting still. Very important to know. Sometimes you can look at it and say, wow, those are huge fish. They may not be. If you're going very slow, chances are it's just getting returned, you know, sending return marks back over and over and over and over again. And it's just sitting under your transducer, absorbing all that energy. And the history makes it look like it's very long because it's just sitting there under your transducer. So those are good things to know. Also, the strength of the return. You'll see some of these returns here. Some of these arches have yellow in them. Okay, if I see a lot of arches with yellow, that's a good sign. It usually means they're bigger fish. In this case, I know this was a lot of bait. I just know because we were netting it, we were catching it. So you see a yellow inside of return, that's a good sign. If you see a lot of arches with yellow, chances are those are bigger fish, stronger returns. Now you're going to see some of these only have the orangish, red, or the blue. It could mean a few things. It could mean they're smaller fish, or it could mean it's near the edge of the cone of your transducer. So it's giving you a weaker signal. They could be, every one of these fish could be the exact same size here. They, and you know, if they're all in the same position on your transducer, they would all be yellow, but they're not all in the same area of the transducer. Some are on the edge, some are on the center. If they're in the center, they're more yellow. If they're on the edge, they're more blue and reddish. I hope that's not too confusing, but that's the way, that's the way the transducer works. More information you'll see over here to the left, we have our depth. And then below that, we have our temperature. It says 59.0 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the temperature at the water the transducer is sitting in. So that transducer is maybe a foot into the water. That is the surface temperature of the water within a foot of the surface. Right where the transducer is, that's the temperature. It's not the temperature any further down into the water column. Okay. Below that, we have our frequency. That is the frequency our transducer is operating at. I have some other videos on chirp frequencies and sweat frequencies and stuff you can look through if you like. But uh, typically, the higher the frequency, the narrower the cone. So if it's a 200 frequency, chances are your cone is narrower. And if it's a lower, like a 50 or an 83, chances are your cone is wider. If I'm searching for fish on plain or in open water, I generally like a wider cone, okay? Hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, please put them there in the comments. I'll be happy to answer every single one. I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and ring that little bell to make sure you get alerts. And I'll keep these going for you guys. If you uh, have any other questions, feel free to ask. I appreciate you watching. Love you. Mean it.